Good evening, and thank you for tuning in this evening to this live stream update regarding COVID-19's impact on Stafford County Public Schools. I'm Holly Hazard and currently serve as chair of the school board. I'm here with Dr. Kisner. We are at least six feet apart, our superintendent, who has been on the front lines these past two weeks. On behalf of the school board, I would really like to thank Dr. Kisner and his staff for the countless hours they have been spending reacting to constantly changing information and working as a team to chart a course forward for the rest of our school year. This is no easy task and there is no blueprint ready showing us how to move forward. However, I know that we have the right team of educators, administrators, parents, and students who will work together to chart a course in these unsettled seas. Before I turn it over to Dr. Kisner for a summary of the information that you need to know, I wanna say that myself and my school board colleagues understand the community's disappointment, fear, frustration with the closing of schools. Many of you know I myself am a parent of a class of 2020 senior and my heart breaks for the seniors, the eighth graders, the fifth graders, and all the grades in between. Nevertheless, the pandemic is the hand that we are being dealt and we all need to adjust to this new reality. The school division is committed to meeting the needs of all of our students in the coming months within the mandates and restrictions that have been imposed. I pray that the restrictions can be loosened in the coming months, but we will have to wait and see. Please, please allow school staff the time to develop thoughtful and reasoned decisions and guidance in the coming weeks. With that introduction, I will turn it over to Dr. Kisner who will lead us through some slides and some information you need to know. Thank you, Ms. Hazard. This presentation is called COVID-19, the Stafford County Public School Plan ever-changing public health crisis and today's date. It is important for all of us to remember that this crisis is constantly changing. Since February 28th, I have written seven letters to parents and staff about this ever-changing health, public health crisis. And everything that I'm sharing with you tonight, I hope you will recognize that this is what we know as of March 24th, 2020, as information constantly changes, as we saw yesterday when our governor of Virginia um, informed the entire state that all schools in Virginia will be closed for the rest of the school year. I want the public to know that any decision that takes place for Stafford County Public School children and its staff is not done without a lot of consultation, discussion, and deliberation. We meet twice a week through technology with the Virginia Department of Education. Our state superintendent, Dr. James Lane, holds two meetings a week with all superintendents throughout Virginia. We are constantly are in contact with the United States Department of Education. They oversee all federal programs and the ones that we are most interested in learning about as it relates to this virus are children with disabilities and children who are English learners. Last week, the United States Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVos, held a national teleconference with superintendents around the country to update us on the latest um, issues that public educators need to be aware of. On that call was the Office of Civil Rights because our decisions are not done in a vacuum. There are federal and state laws that we must abide to. They have not been suspended. So when we make a decision, it may at times be unclear why are they choosing this pathway, I would only ask you to please appreciate that we have to navigate local, state, and federal requirements. Every day, the local emergency management team has an 8.30 phone call. To my colleagues in Stafford, I cannot thank you enough for all of us 
every agency, every department head, that includes the health department, law enforcement, city, county government, and many others, that we meet to discuss the local impact of this virus to the Stafford community. We always take our information from the Center for Disease Control and the Virginia Health Department. Getting into more specifics, I want, and I think much, much of this has already been shared, that there have been some decisions that have been clearly made that I want to just reiterate. Virginia, who follows the standards of learning tests, that have been suspended for the 2019-20 school year. So there will be no expectation for children this year or when they return next year to take the tests that they were supposed to have taken this year. Children that are in our International Baccalaureate program, that also has been um, suspended for this school year, and those children will qualify for the um, diploma that they were pursuing. The advanced placement um, exam will be modified, and uh, fees have been waived, and those who are in the advanced placement classes that are uh, planning to take a test in May, they've been notified about those changes, but if you are listening and you have not been notified or want more information, you can find it on our website. I will end the presentation later by putting our website um, uh, address on the screen. It's also um, important to realize that we, as educators, obviously want the learning to continue. As Ms. Hazard has already indicated, our approach for what we're calling home learning or continuity of instruction is to do it wisely and not rush things. As you are fully aware, or maybe you are not aware, last week our teachers, our school division, was actually planning to celebrate spring break. And I made it very clear that I wanted our school community, our staff, our students, and the parents to take that week to celebrate the way they were planning to celebrate if they could. Um, but I wanted to be clear that our staff was not going to be called in to work on these home learning activities. But on our website, in a letter that I sent yesterday, we have started the process of rolling out home activities that parents can do with their children. But I must tell you, although I will talk about this again later, we are also very aware that not all children in Stafford have a computer and not all children in Stafford have access to the internet. We are taking steps to address that. We, prior to spring break, asked parents to inform us if they did not have a computer or if they did not have access to the internet. Over 500 families notified us, and starting tomorrow, we will begin the process of providing Chromebooks and a, um, what's called a Khajiit, which will give folks the ability to find a hotspot so they can be online. We are, of course, also making paper copies of the work that we're putting online, so those who feel more comfortable with a paper product, that, that will be available and you have been notified and will continue to be notified on how you could access that information. I want to now to kind of join, uh, to join Ms. Hazard in something that um, I appreciate as a father of four daughters who graduated from high school. I realize that the senior year is an exciting year. It's a stressful year. It's a year where you're excited to leave, but you also are sad to leave because you've had, hopefully, a great experience being a student in Stafford County Public Schools. Your senior year is not supposed to end, in essence, on March 12th. 
There are celebrations, there are rituals, such as prom, different galas, marching the hallways of the school that you're in elementary and middle school to be honored by the younger children, and of course, there's the graduation ceremony. What I could tell you today is that we are still committed in finding a way to honor our high school seniors. Approximately 2,500 students will, would have received their diploma in a, in a most traditional but most beautiful way by having their parents, grandparents, and friends celebrating along with them for that accomplishment. I am not going to suggest on March 24th that that will not happen, but I want to be honest that if that is unable to happen because of restrictions that are set forth by the governor, by the Center for Disease Control, or even our local best decisions, we will still find another way to help our high school seniors celebrate their great accomplishment, which leads to a very important point which our high school seniors need to know. If you were on track to graduate, you are graduating. You are graduating. Your March 12th, last day of school, will count like it was the last day of school if we had a full year. So I don't want anyone listening to this to wonder, I didn't complete this, I didn't complete that, how am I gonna get the credits to graduate? We have been working with the Virginia Department of Education and I assure you no child will be penalized if they were meeting the requirements to graduate, you will graduate. I do wanna to speak to another group of children, students. If you were missing a credit, if you were retaking a class that was going to help you meet the graduation requirements, we are going to work with you and we are going to help you complete what needs to be completed so you could join the class of 2020 and be a high school graduate in Stafford. For all other children, oh, let me make sure I comment on the middle school students that are working towards a high school credit. We are also making plans so you will not lose out on that high school credit if you were in, for example, in algebra or geometry or a foreign language. My expectation is that you will enter the high school with that credit and if we need to extend the learning um, for the students when we're able to come back to school for that to occur, that's what we will do. And I, again, will be sending out a memo, a letter to parents and staff to address this issue in greater uh, degree. Some of the other things that I would like to um, focus on is our grab and go meal distribution. I have received some emails today, was that going to be impacted by the governor's decision of yesterday? And the answer is no. I could tell you that our first day, I don't have today's numbers, that we served almost, actually 1,500 meals throughout the Stafford County community. So if you're listening, and you're not familiar with this um, opportunity, this is for all children 18 and under, please, again, go to our website and you could see the times and schedule in which the meals are made available. This is a federal program that we received a waiver to participate, and the sole objective is to make sure young people are being fed. A school system is a complex organization, and we have many fifth graders that will be entering sixth grade, and we have many eighth graders that will be entering ninth grade. And I just want to assure the students and parents that are listening 
that we are working on and continuing the middle and high school registrations. And you may be receiving phone calls over the next few days or weeks or emails. If the registration has not been completed, we will complete it. And by the time we return for the 2021 school year, you will have your classes and everything will be a seamless and positive transition. I know there have been some questions about the fifth to sixth grade transition as it relates to math, because there's a math, um, in a sense, entry exam. Again, that information will be presented to families so you'll understand the courses that your child will have for the 2021 school year. I want to also assure our families who have children with disabilities and have children who speak English as a second language. This is an example where we are working extremely close with the federal and state government to make sure we are taking every step so your child's education is being followed as prescribed by the law. Our special education teachers, our central office uh, special ed administrators have been meeting and working to make sure again that your child's education plan is not being compromised. We recognize that all children, but especially children with a certain learning needs, the loss of an instruction time can have some real adverse consequences and we're trying and making the decisions so that is minimized. I want to talk to the parents for a second. It's often said that parents are the first teacher, and I believe it. I had four children. I still have four children. And I would like to believe that my wife and I, we valued the importance that we had in helping our children become successful adults. So I am not going to read what you're seeing on the screen, but I just want to again re reinforce that there are many activities that you can do with your child that does not require a textbook to be open, doesn't require an exam to take place. It's an opportunity as your child is home, and I know many people who are listening, they're home. They're home because maybe their job has stopped. Maybe their hours have been reduced. This is not a normal time, and I'm not going to suggest it's a normal time. And I was reminded by a parent just yesterday that her husband now is working from home. They have three children in their house. They have one computer. Her request to me as superintendent, my family is already experiencing a lot of stress. What we don't need is a expectation that my kids will have to do so many things in a short period of time when I know my husband is going to need the computer for many hours during the day. I'm gonna talk in a, in a minute or two about stress, but I just want you to know that when you look at the learning at home ideas to consider, which does come from the Virginia Department of Education and we have it on our website, um, I believe this is an opportunity to help your child learn in a way that I think will bring parents and children closer together. So what do we have to do moving ahead? I have asked our teachers and administrators to do the right thing, not the rush thing. I asked them to look at learning activities that are reasonable when there's not a teacher, a licensed teacher in the house. I asked them to look at learning activities that will reinforce the learning that has already taken place. I do have concerns about asking children to learn something new when there is not 
the certified teacher, licensed teacher to be there to help them understand it in a way that the student will grasp it and be successful. Not saying that some parents or many parents cannot do that, but I am just being honest. If my child came home with a physics lesson, a chemistry lesson, I would struggle as a parent on helping them where maybe in certain other subject matters, I would feel a little bit more successful. So the work ahead is that our teachers this week, next week, if it takes more time, are putting together home learning activities that will be able to be accomplished at home with the guidance and support of our great teachers, but not overly stressing our parents and students. Little kids. So there is many, I talked about the kids who are leaving, the culminating event of graduation, but we also will have a lot of kids joining us starting August of 20. And for those parents who are wondering about kindergarten registration, we will soon be sharing the registration procedure. Why we are not doing registration right now is because it requires families to come in and have their child registered and go through some screening, developmental screening exercises. And as you know, we are limiting face-to-face -face contact. So your child will be with us. We want your child. But if you're wondering why am I not registering my child yet, is because we have put that on pause. Students, we are in the process of looking at when we can return to school, a program where students that maybe need additional support can come in maybe in June, maybe expand our summer school in July, and offer additional support for students, and also for students who may not think or didn't think on March 12th they needed additional support, but they now want to accelerate. So for example, if you're taking Spanish 1 and you're enrolling in Spanish 2, you might say, well, there's almost nine weeks where I have not had Spanish instruction. And again, this is under the title of Work Ahead, and our staff are planning on how we could offer an extended learning period in between the time where uh, school opens, and I'm hopeful, I'm being optimistic. I, I, I share Ms. Hazard, I'm hoping we could open up soon. I might be telling you in a couple weeks, couple months that everything I'm sharing right now is unable to occur because of um, decisions out of my control. But I just want you to know that we are looking at ways that we could extend the learning um, for, for young people before the official opening of the 2021 school year. So I know because we ended on March 12th, no one expected that. I surely did not expect that. Um, we started today of having parents come and pick up the medications that have been in our schools. We know that um, a lot of these medications are, are prescriptions where you cannot get a, another refill until the uh, current prescription is completed. We also know there's medication like asthma medication and so on. So today from one to three, our nurses um, were at the schools uh, handing out medication. I understand not all parents were able to make it, so you will be hearing about other, uh, other times in which the medication to, can be distributed. And then of course there's belongings, from sweatshirts to book bags to books to, uh, sometimes I don't want to open up those lockers, I don't know what gonna, we're gonna find in there. Musical but we want you to get it, we want you to re return it to you, but we want to do it when it's safe and when we're able to have uh, more than 10 people c congregating in a building. So you will be hearing more about that. I want to um, f uh, kind of finish on some, uh, to me, what I think is very important. First, I just want to remind us again, it's on our website, that we have to, and I think again, 
If there's anything positive that's going to come out of this, we're going to learn about appropriate preventative measures. Washing your hand with soap for 20 seconds, making sure if you cough and sneeze, you cough and sneeze in a tissue or, or your, or your um, arm, that we're going to appreciate the importance of taking good care of ourselves and the importance of a member of a community and that when we're sick, we have the obligation to get better and not put other people in a position where they may get ill. So again, on our website and in almost every letter that I have sent out since February 28th, we have shared best preventative measures. To the parents, your children home realize this is not normal. They realize this is not Christmas break. This is not the excitement of an unexpected snow day. This is not summer break. This is a time where parents, where children are realizing that their parents are home for an extended period of time. They're realizing that they can't go out and play with their friends. Movie theaters, bowling, restaurants, you name it, are closed. And I would hope as parents, although we talk to our children honestly in a way they can understand, we also realize that when we have the TV on and we are hearing the news, that as an adult, we might be able to process and understand what's going on. But as a, for a child, when they see the death counts and a number of people that are getting sick, that could be very scary for them. So I hope as parents, we understand, and I understand that people who might be listening have children as young as two and three and older as 18, 19, and 20. But for all children, this is an unusual time. And again, I feel very strongly not to put an additional burden and stress on the children because of this ever-changing public health crisis. To the parents, I applaud you. This has not been what any one of us expected. Many of you I have talked to in the last week, you've had to change your work schedule, you've had to change your routine. You are now being asked to not only take care of your children, many of you have parents that you're concerned about, you have brothers and sisters that you're concerned about, and now you are under a circumstance where you are again looking for the schools to support you. And we will support you. And what I would offer you as parents, if you want one of our school counselors, social workers, psychologists, if you want me, to you want to have a conversation, just reach out. Email me, call me, and we will arrange that to occur. To my staff, I've been proud of you at a, at a level that I can't really articulate at the short time I have. I have seen on social media your comments about wanting to be with your students, wanting to see the children, not having a chance to say goodbye. And I know many of you who are, work for us, this was your last year. This was the year that you were going, that you are retiring and you did not get that formal goodbye that the school system offers and the opportunity to be with your kids in a, in a very emotional, passionate, and professional way. And I, again, like I said, for parents, I know many of our teachers and bus drivers and cafeteria folks and so on, you are mothers and fathers, and you are sons and daughters, and you are brothers and sisters. So not only are you addressing your position at Stafford County Public Schools, you are also trying to manage your most important um, uh, support network, which is your family. So I end how I always like to end, that together we stay positive, we take steps that maybe we never thought about before. This is a great opportunity, I think, for parents to learn a little bit more about what their children are learning, for teachers and others to learn about a different delivery model, 
for us to appreciate conversations that maybe we haven't had before, that remaining positive, Stafford County Public Schools, along with every school system, will become stronger. So I appreciate leading this school system because I really believe we have the greatest students, greatest children, greatest staff members, and a remarkably supportive parent and community at large. And I end by offering you our webpage that has all the resources and information that we are sharing with the community and other information that we have gotten from professional organiza organizations like the Center for Disease Control and the Virginia Department of Health. I wish everyone well, and you could count on me at least weekly sending a letter to parents and staff updating you on the latest information. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank Dr. Kisner um, for coming out and doing this together. When we uh, talked about this last week, we had no idea at the time that on Monday we were going to get news that closed down the school system. So I'm actually glad we went ahead with it because in, normally we would have had our school board meeting tonight. Um, again, in, in closing and before we um, sign off tonight, I wanted to talk a little bit about uncharted seas and scary waters. Um, I wanna leave you all with just something uplifting and something to think about. Um, as we all know, Christopher Columbus did not believe that the earth was flat and he chose to what you would think sail over the edge of the map since they thought. And if you were a crew member on Columbus's ship, even if you believed that Columbus was correct, that the uh, earth was a sphere, your fear of the unknown was probably have been fairly high. But not Columbus. Columbus was not fearful of the unknown. He may have been apprehensive about what he might find on the far side of the globe, but he was determined to sail off even into the frightening unknown. And the reason I believe that he took his courage was from his realization that he was taking something known with him. The waters into which he was sailing may have been uncharted, uncertain, unknown, but sailing he did know. The basic principles would hold true no matter how far into the western Atlantic that he sailed. Wind would still drive a boat forward, the rudder would still turn the ship away from the rocks, and the anchor would still hold fast when you reach your destination. Today we are in uncharted and uncertain waters and there is fear of the unknown. But we know that some principles will hold true even in this new ocean. We have amazing people who are innovative, creative, and driven to do what is best for our students. We have school staff and community members committed to meeting students' needs, both physical and mental. We are a community of people of varying gifts and talents who can come together to support fellow community members who are afraid, hurting, sick, and disappointed. I am proud to be a part of this community, and I believe that together we can successfully navigate this uncharted sea. I have often heard the quote, a ship in harbor is safe, but that is not what ships are built for. This pandemic has caused many of us to become a ship safe in the harbor in our homes, and please know that is good. We want you to stay physically in that harbor, but let's make sure that our hearts and minds do not dwell on the safety or what we wanted this year to be. Let's launch our creativity, innovative ideas, and work together as we navigate these unwanted and uncharted seas. Please support and be patient with your school staff as they work within the guidelines that are required. Remain Stafford Schools strong even if the waters are not what you expected. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in tonight, and I wish you well and stay well. Thank you.